Welcome back to a special episode of Talk Back, two years after the quake. We're talking to Lieutenant General Nadeem Ahmed, the Deputy Chairman of ERA. General. There's also been criticism, speaking of making policies from Islamabad, there's also criticism about the location of ERA, that here, in the safety and the comfort of the Prime Minister's Secretariat, ERA is an Islamabad-centric organization. ERA is a centralist, a federalist organization, I which is not where the action is, which is not on the ground. I hope you know that uh, all my program managers, we have a program manager for every sector, they spend three days in the field and every two to three days in a week I'm out personally. So if uh, we, we are not the, really the people uh, who are not aware of the ground realities. We go meet every kind of person. We go and see projects, we go and meet communities. And uh, But you're the deputy chairman. You think one to two days out of Islamabad is enough? For what's going on on the ground? Yeah. Wouldn't you rather be on the ground? You can't be on ground. Where the action the, is, general? No, I, I am on the ground. As I said, two days in a week minimum, I'm, I'm meeting people, I'm seeing projects, I'm seeing things, I'm trying to improve wherever we see. There are some bottlenecks, things are not moving fast. The way so what would you say to the people who criticize ERA's location here in the comfort of the PM secretary? You know, ERA can, can be only one. It, if, if I put it in Abbottabad or Mansera or Badgram, the same criticism will come, why not in Muzaffarabad? And that is why you must understand the, the concept. We always said, let the implementation responsibility remain with the provincial government, because unless they have ownership, they will say, this is not our project. All right, let's move on. Transparency has been an issue. There's, for example, there was a report last year from Oxfam, which I'm sure you're familiar with, but for the benefit of our viewers, this is what it said and pleaded that ERA should be transparent and accountable in reconstruction activities, this is a quote, not only to the donors, but also to the survivors. Now the question is, what is ERA doing for policy sharing? I, I hope you know that, and I wonder if you've been able to see that, probably ERA is one of those organizations which has a very comprehensive, and at some times I say even, uh, you know, a difficult transparent system for us, which we have evolved for ourselves. Every project that we are doing, we have an internal audit system to look at both the physical and the financial parameters. Then we have a separate dedicated office in the Auditor General of Pakistan's office, which is just looking at ERA, nothing else, right? Third, we have our monitoring and evaluation wing, which is looking not only at the construction monitoring, but also the social monitoring, and we are looking at the impact assessment of our interventions on the lives of the common people. And finally, we have an international third party, which is going to validate what we are saying. I can also share with you that uh, ERA may be the only organization in Pakistan which has put its audit report on the website for anyone to see. Sure, I want to talk about the audit report, General, because you have put the audit report by the Auditor General of Pakistan, and you've also admitted that uh, there's external auditor, you have your internal auditor, you have the Auditor General, but if you go to your website, interestingly enough, only the Auditor General's report and your internal audit is online, the external audit is not no, online, the, third the external part, validation link to your website no, doesn't work. No, the external validation has not been done because that's, this is going to be the first time in December that What about the external audit? You're saying it's been done, but... No, external audit has been done by the Auditor General of Pakistan and that report is on the web. But you're saying besides the PAG, besides the Pakistan Auditor General, you also have uh, an external auditor. And you just said yeah, you have an international... International ex third party auditor. validation. Where, where's, that, where's that audit, no, sir? that's what I was explaining. That the first time the third party validation is going to be done is going to be in December this year, right? So once that is done, it will be put on the website. We have gone so far ahead that even our daily monitoring reports are available on the website. If you just go and look at the monitoring report. Why did it take two years to get an independent external auditor? Not really two years. You need to understand this. It's been this. two years since the quick. The, yeah, but uh, ERA was ERA, formed a few days after? No, ERA actually came into it was formed after, but as I said, I joined it on 22nd of February, and uh, at that point in time, we just had three offices and about 10, 12 people to work with, no computers, no vehicles, no telephones, nothing. And we would just sit down and fight for chairs and for computers, or if there was one. Interesting times, I'm sure. Yeah, they were. Here was an organization which really got going in somewhere in March, April 2006, and it's just been one and a half year. And, you know, when you look at the processes that you have to complete uh, before you really start getting into the physical mode. So you like, wanted to work first? 
effectively. No, we were actually running a 100 meter rate, uh, race with our uh, trying to tie our shoelaces, frankly speaking, because we were trying to same time get the organization up. General, two years is a lot of time and two years and not putting up an audit report, an independent audit report on your website. You that's know, there that's was, an issue of transparency, no, according no, to your detractors. No, no, no. I think there was no point in putting an audit report when there was nothing on ground. Now, th this is the, actually, if you look at it, frankly speaking, as I said, April 2006, we started. We are one and a half year down the road. And we were initially trying to put our, our own house in order. Let's get functional, and then we will get the third party also. And th that process is okay. on. All right. If, uh, also about your website, the perks and privileges to the civilian and the military officials are not listed on your website. The organogram of your website does not give the names of who does what. Very interestingly. I, I don't know if it's not given there or if it was... It, it looks if like there, an intelligence if, cell. If, if there was a... No, there. I don't think that's a correct presumption. I think we've given everything on the web. But I don't think there was a requirement to say what DG procurement will do or what DG finance will do. It's or, not just... Don't you think that's important? Billions, no, of, but rupees, everyone, billions of dollars but, no, going but, into this no, organization. But everyone knows what DG Finance is supposed to be doing, what DG Procurement will do, what DG Monitoring and Evaluation will do, what DG Planning will do. So you don't really need to put in there. But the second point that you raised... And what about the salary structures? Yeah, th that's the second point what that you raised. What about the perks? The salary, we are not giving any additional salary, right? It's the st like I was drawing as a lieutenant general, whatever I was drawing in the army, I'm drawing the same money plus a deputation allowance, which is known to everyone. So I'm not getting any additional penny while working here. We have to take a short break here, General. We're talking to Lieutenant General Nadeem Ahmed, the deputy chairman of ERA. Stay tuned.